BestBookBits.com presents Confessions of a Serial Entrepreneur by Stuart Scorman. Entrepreneur Stuart Scorman, the founder of Elephant Pharmacy, HungryMinds.com, Real.com, and Empire Video, grew up in a tailing family in Iowa. He worked every kind of job, from cab driver to professional poker player to CEO. In this entertaining personal account of his coming of age in the business world, Scorman gives an insider's view on what it takes to start a business from the ground up. Stuart Scorman offers his hard-won lessons in business for any entrepreneur or small business person who wants to create a company that has a heart and soul. He reveals what he learned about marketing while working at a stint as a rock band manager and bears his soul about his failure during the dot-com bubble. He describes in vivid terms the roller coaster ride of the entrepreneur in good times and bad and explains how to serve his environment. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Confessions of a Serial Entrepreneur. Each time I introduced a new business model to the industry and strove to enrich my customers' lives in some way, when my business was up and running and growing, I couldn't wait to move on and invent something else. The essence of an entrepreneur is the diehard belief that we are the only one able to make things happen. Starting a business is often an act of desperation. Entrepreneurs are desperate for success and accomplishment. Desperation pushes us to take huge risks, leave comfort and security behind, and allow a business to consume our lives. To make sure their customers knew Miracle Mart was the cheapest store in town, they charged only a nickel for a bottle of Coca-Cola when the same bottle was a dime everywhere else. Deeply discounting Coke, a product everyone knew the price of, gave customers the impression that everything in the store was a steal. If while driving down the street we passed a vacant lot, he'd say that'd make a great spot for a hamburger place. Or I hadn't seen a car wash for five miles. That's what this neighborhood needs, a car wash. He was always right. No, you need a mentor. No, you need a mentor. The more ambitious you are, the more help you'll require. Prioritize a mentoring relationship. Seek out a good mentor just as you'd seek out a great location, a favorable contract or a business partner. Make a list of the qualities you'd like to find in a mentor and don't settle for the first person who comes along. What can you do to return the favor? Your contribution may be something as simple as cleaning your mentor's office or doing errands. Look for a need your mentor has and fill it. Always be on the lookout for mentors. They may be in the unlikeliest places. Join a professional organization. The more you circulate in your chosen field, the more likely you are to bump into potential mentors. If you start any business counting the hours you work or limiting the tasks you're willing to shoulder, your business will fail. On being a brand manager, I got smart enough to ignore my taste in music. Instead, I stuffed cotton in my ears, sat on the stage, and watched the audience. A band's success can be predicted by the audience's reaction. Learning how to focus on my customer's taste rather than my own was an important early business lesson that has served me well. Any successful business person knows you have to do whatever it takes to get the objective market research. Just spouting off what you think the market wants or needs isn't good enough. Being a musician and making a living as one are two different things. If you want to earn a living, you must get paid by someone who values your services. The question entertainers need to ask themselves is not, are we talented, but do we have a drawing power? I left the music business at the age of 25 and retired. This was the start of a work pattern I continued all the way up to age 57, busting my butt for two or three years, burning out, and following up with a quiet period where I'd rest up for my next big adventure. When creating a new business, design it to attract publicity from the beginning. Think about your business idea from a public relations standpoint. Can the business get good press? Is there a story? Is it tropical? Is the business something people would want to read about? One of the most important PR decisions is your business's name and tagline. Before christening your business, ask yourself, does the name get people's attention? Does it have positive associations? Does it sound authentic? Can the name help get us good press? Don't be afraid to choose a name that some people hate. You want something a little edgy because people respect a business person who takes risks. Watch out for enthusiasts without experience. They are often better customers than workers. 
If a job is similar to the one you're filling isn't listed on an application's resume, tread carefully. People who haven't had similar positions in the past might not know enough about themselves to realize they won't be happy. I was out to understand what made these stubborn small town entrepreneurs tick. When a customer says he'd returned a movie, but the store's computer can't find it, the employee was trained to say, no problem, our mistake, and to note the discrepancy on the customer's file. We had a three strikes and you're out policy. 30 years plus of business wisdom into a single lesson. Get to know your customers. Get to know your customers. Let people with the best resumes make the decisions. Of course, a company's leader ultimately must take responsibility for the decision. But the best leaders let themselves be heavily influenced by advisors with the appropriate experience and training. Decide whether you belong in the game. I'm not a gambler. Professional poker players approach the game as a business. They recognize that gambling is bad for business. To gamble is to rely on luck instead of facts. The professionals cash in by waiting for gamblers to come along. What if there are no businesses to study? Say you've done your homework, canvassed the landscape, and no one is doing what you're proposing. Usually that's bad news, which means you should take a step back. There are millions of smart people in the world. We all have access to the same information and therefore all hatch similar ideas. Most likely there are reasons that someone has not already capitalized on your idea. Figure out what the roadblocks are before you get started. I was a success, which meant the challenge was over and it was time for me to move on. Be aggressive. Aggressive poker players win by scaring other players into making mistakes. In business, one way to succeed is to scare your competitors. Wait until you have great cards before playing, so your odds of winning are much better than those of the people who play every hand they are dealt. In business, this practice translates as being conservative. For instance, opening up a franchise might be a smart move than starting a company from scratch. Half of succeeding in business is being in the right place at the right time. The other half is recognizing that time when it comes. Base your decision on logic, not emotion. Base your decision on logic, not emotion. Many people let feelings and passion steer them toward a business, but don't let your heart call the shots. Starting a business is a logical decision. Stay focused on the important questions. Who are you? Where do you fit? Who are your competitors? Stick with the familiar. Choose something that feels comfortable. If it doesn't feel like a natural fit for your skills and personality, pick something else. Prioritize fun. If you don't enjoy your work, you won't succeed. Look for a business with the potential to be deeply satisfying. Enter an established field. If your business idea is 100% original, there is a reason that no one else is doing it. Look around at what other business people are doing, what works for them, and what doesn't. Both mistakes and innovations are best learned by watching others make them first. Focus on short-term goals. Don't get ahead of yourself. Forget about designating a business for the next decade. Instead, design it for the next year. Unless you are focused on profit when you design your business, it will probably fail. If an idea is obvious but no one else has tried it, there is probably a good reason. Borrow as much as you can from others. Don't look for the out-of-the-box solutions. Find other people who are either doing what you want to do or doing pieces of your plan. Nothing is so new that someone hasn't already mastered parts of it. Nine times out of ten, someone has already solved the puzzle you are flummoxed over. In other professions, mistakes can be a disaster. Surgeons, lawyers, and accountants are paid a premium for perfection. But mistakes are a daily part of the life for serial entrepreneurs. When you start a business, you need to focus on profit. You need to focus on profit. If you prioritize helping people, your attention won't be on making money and your business will fail. Pick a model where helping people is profitable. The education business, an industry where making a profit is notoriously difficult. I was a rich guy, bowed by the security and comfort of my wealth. I was no longer hungry or desperate. Two qualities a startup CEO needs. And that's a wrap on Confessions of a Serial Entrepreneur. Subscribe to the channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. 
If you like reading and want to get involved in sharing knowledge and spreading great book summaries, connect with myself by emailing us at info at bestbookbits.com and join the team.